then the next section would be materials and methods. You know, all important materials and all important methods used in a particular investigation that has resulted in the data and the data of which was neatly analyzed and presented in the results and discussion should be mentioned. There are some critical materials that are used, not the normal general materials like organic solvents or inorganic salts, you know, uh, which are used in most of the investigations, you need not list them, but some critical uh, materials, you know, if a particular um, type of drug is used, you know, what is the source of that drug? If a particular type of reagent is used to, to perform a specific a, you know, assay or develop a method or um, you know, to evaluate uh, a pharmacological effect, you used a standard um, or you have used a specific excipient to develop a, um, a new novel type of formulation, then those drugs have to be listed along, I mean those materials have to be listed along with the source. You know, so that anybody who wishes to reproduce your, uh, ma I mean, um, you read your manuscript and then wishes to reproduce your study or carry forward your studies, they should be able to understand what materials have actually been used in your work. And methods. All the most important methods or main methods should be described in brief. And if you have already um, you know, citing uh, the methods have already been described by another author, then you would say that we have used the method as reported by so and so, you know. But if you have used a modification, then your statement would be that the method reported by so and so is used with a minor modification and the minor modification being, so you describe what is exactly the modification that you performed. So it is essential to write that in materials and methods. If you are using, let us say, laboratory animals in a pharmacological study or you are using human subjects in a clinical study, first you have to describe those protocols, second you must also mention that ethical permission has been obtained, you know, from either institutional animal ethics committee or an independent ethics committee which is, or an independent review board uh, which is constituted to evaluate and um, give permission to perform clinical studies. You, know. you must ensure that the Animal Ethics Committee as well as the Human Ethics Committee are actually registered and approved by the regulatory authorities. You know, either it is the CPCSEA in case of animals or it is the DCGI or ICMR in the case of um, human ethics. It is also essential that you describe your methods briefly and the statistics that you have applied and the level of significance that you have chosen to evaluate subsequently your results using a statistical test at a particular level of significance to decide whether the result obtained in this particular investigation is significant or not. You know. Here there is a particular um, you know, rule to be followed. In biostatistics, that means in statistics that are guarding biological and pharmacological and pharmaceutical sciences experiments, you are supposed to be deciding the statistical test and the level of significance prior to the investigation. Except in the clinical studies, it is usually statistics is applied subsequently when the data is obtained. So here the statistics is the test and the level of significance is chosen a priori. So therefore, once you choose your level of significance like P less than or equal to 0.05, you should state in the manuscript that the level of significance has always been, you know, uh, determined at that level of significance, that, you know, P level. Later on, you should not change it that some results are found to be significant at P less than 0.01 and some are significant at P less than 0.001, you know. Because in for some journals, this is unethical statistical practice and manuscripts can be rejected based on that. Please be aware of that.